Okay, so in this video, we're gonna see how we set up our React app with TypeScript, how we configured Next.js to serve our React app, we then configured Tailwind CSS to style it, and then we were able to move elements within an HTML canvas. So stay tuned for all the details. Hello world, my name is Igor and welcome to my channel. Here you can find coding tutorials as well as coding challenges just like this one. So if you're interested in this type of content, consider dropping a like in this video and subscribing for more. So this video is going to be part one of a challenge that's currently ongoing of a series called From Scratch. And in it, we are starting to build an Among Us clone with React. All development of this series is done live on my Twitch channel every Wednesday and Saturday. So if you are interested and want to come and say hi on the chat, I'm going to drop the link to my Twitch channel in the description down below. So now let's get into what we were able to achieve in part one. Okay, so we started by creating a React app with the npm package create React app. We named it Among Us Clone and we ran start. We also installed all the dependencies to make TypeScript available in the typings that we needed. So in the terminal, we just went into the directory of the project and ran the command. We then copied Next.js scripts to run our app instead of the default React scripts that the Create React app installs, and also the dependencies needed to run that, which are Next, React, and React DOM. We then tried to run npm start to start our next project, which throwed an error because there was no build folder, which is normal because we have not built the project. So next we run npm run dev, which is the correct command for development. Another error, this time we forgot to create the pages directory. So we fired up VS Code, created a folder called pages, which is required by Next.js, and dropped our React component within it. Then we ran the command again, and success. We started a server on localhost 3000. So on the browser, we went to localhost 3000 slash our React component name, which is app. Another error. This time, global CSS cannot be imported from files other than a specific Next.js file, which is underscore app.js. So we copied that file name, we created it on VS Code, and also copy the boilerplates that Next.js has in its documentation, pasted it, changed the default import of the styles, because ours is named index.css instead of styles.css, saved and tried to run the app again. Same error. But so what did we forget? Well, the default React component of the Create React app also has stylings included, so we deleted the file as well as the import of the React component, and while we are at it, we just also deleted the logo, because we will not be using it for this project. We saved, we reloaded the page, and success. We have a React component. So now to install Tailwind CSS with our project, went to the, we went to their website and copied the command that they have. So in our project, we ran npm install Tailwind CSS. Next, Tailwind CSS needs to be configured. The command is Tailwind CSS init. This creates a file called tailwindsconfig.js in the root of our project. The next step was to include the Tailwind's directives into our global CSS file. Now that we had Tailwind, we can just start adding class names to our elements. So we added font bold and the color blue to this paragraph. We saved it, reloaded, and nothing happened. Then with the help of a viewer, it's Stefan, a good friend of mine, we noticed that we were missing another file on the root of our project. The file name is postcss config.js, and we pasted the template code that Stefan provided us, and we have stylings. We then started working on the index page. We created a new name, it's among them, it's a whole new game. We also added new classes to mess around with paddings and spacings. And created also a new page that was gonna be named Game. 
Within that page we created a new React component and we named it Game but with a capital letter. Inside we just wrote Welcome to the Game to see if we can change pages within our app. Now within Next to navigate between pages you can use Next Link component. So we import the Next Link component and we use it down below. Now, according to the documentation, it's recommended to, within the link component, also have an anchor tag. So we added an anchor tag and we added some stylings to make it look like a button. So we made the button blue and we added some padding. We made some more tweaks to the page just to, so that the button would fit in. Formatted our file a bit more just to be prettier. And then we added some more classes. The button is going to be round, the text is going to be white, it's going to be bold as well, and also uppercase. So this is what we end up with. Now clicking on the button, we just go to the new page, welcome to the game. Now it was time to install React P5. So we copied the command of the npm package that works as a wrapper and pasted it on our project. Now P5 is a JavaScript library for creative coding. We copied the boilerplate from the npm package documentation and we created a new components folder that would hold our canvas. So within the folder we created a canvas.tsx file that rendered the new functional component and we pasted the code that we got from the package. We then formatted the file a little bit, cleaned up all unnecessary stuff and we were left with a canvas component. Now this canvas component is going to use p5 to create a canvas within our parent element and in the draw function it's just going to draw a black background of color 0 representing black and an ellipse and an x position, a y position and with a 70-70 radius. It's also going to increment an x variable which represents the x coordinate of the ellipse so each time it's going to be incremented it's going to be moving to the right. Now within our game component we substituted our welcome message with that new canvas component. We saved the file, switched to our tab, reloaded, and we have an ellipse going from the left to right. Then we tried our luck and hit reload again. And well behold, we got an error. Window not to find. So after a bit of research, just found out that P5 relies on the window. And Next.js at first serve of the page does not has window defined because it's server side rendering. So the workaround we found was to dynamically import p5 within the game component. So luckily, Next has a way of handling that. We imported the Next dynamic component, and instead of using the sketch component directly from the React p5 module, we just said, yeah, we, sketch is going to be a dynamic import from the React p5 module, and server-side rendering will be toggled to false. We cleaned up the old import, Save the file, we loaded the page, and we have an ellipse again. So now we just messed around a bit with the drawing functions. Instead of just incrementing the X, we decided, yeah, we're just gonna increment the Y also. So now we made our ellipse go diagonally instead of just going horizontally. That's a plus. Next, we wanted the background image to be displayed behind our ellipse. We went to Google, we searched a lot of time for a simple image. The first one was the wrong format, we couldn't use it. Then we searched a bit more, we found another image and we saved it as an asset. Now to load images on p5 we need to declare a preload function that's going to be run before the setup of the canvas. So we declare a new preload function and we need to save that image somewhere within a variable. So we declare a background variable and on the preload function just gonna say that p5 load our image at this specific destination and save it into the background variable that we just declared. Now we add this function to the sketch itself so that it runs just before the setup. All that's left is that within the draw loop we call p5 image we pass the variable that holds that image and the coordinates at which we want to draw it. We reload our page again and we have an error. 404 asset not found. Then I just remembered assets are loaded from the public folder instead of the assets folder. 
So we moved it, renamed the import, and we have an image. Now the image does not fill up the entire canvas, which was not what we want. So we messed around with the parameters and just said, yeah, fill all the canvas. Now we wanted the image to not only fill the canvas, but fill the canvas more. We found out that the image was smaller than the canvas, so we couldn't do what we wanted. So we went searching for another image within Google. We searched a bit more, couldn't find what we wanted. We had the wrong formats and then we got an image. We downloaded the image with the same name. So now we could just reload the page and see the new image being loaded. As you can see, what we wanted actually happened. The image is not being entirely displayed. Only a portion of the image with that exact same size is being displayed. So that's parameters of the P5 function. So if we change these second parameters in the X axis, for example, we can just render the image a bit to the right. So now we can see an example here. We're seeing that part of the map, but if we hit 500 there, the image has now moved 500 pixels to the right. So just to see this in motion, we substituted those variables for the X and Y of the ellipse itself and now we have two moving parts, an ellipse and a background. So this was part one of our series of building an Among Us clone that we named Among Them and that we are currently live streaming on my Twitch channel live every Wednesday and Saturday. If you like this video, please drop a like down below and let me know in the comments what you would have done differently. Now, if you want to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to this channel. And if you want to participate in our live coding sessions, follow me on Twitch in the link in the description. And I'll see you the next time. Bye.